Well, what up, what up, what up? Ah. It's Scott and Jeff uh, here to talk Mormons. Talking Mormons, about Mormons, by Mormons. Okay. If you're going to talk like about that. Mormons, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And if you want to answer questions about Mormons, if you're looking for something, if you have a question about Mormons, shouldn't you ask Mormons? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't know where to find a Mormon. Well, you've found some. Mm -hmm. So stop the internet, deep, weird internet searches, because it's going to bring up stuff that trust us. We're just regular people. We're not weirdos. We, you know, we're not backwards, hayseed, rubes, multi-wived freaks. Okay? I couldn't add I bowl, any other adjective. I go to movies. <laughs> I jog. I ride my bike. Oh, you get quiet. notifications I'm getting from Siri. Siri. <laughs> so I've got modern... To, we're just regular people. So if you have questions about Mormons, ask Mormons. If you know a Mormon in your village, ask a Mormon. <laughs> you know, the witch doctor. Yeah. So... Jeff and Scott, uh, again, yeah. we're just regular, normal guys. We've been Mormons for a long, long time. We're both married with kids and, and have jobs and all of that. But one thing that we both also have, which is the thesis of today's question, which is, what is the priesthood? Does everybody get the priesthood? What's the deal with women in the priesthood? We know people ask that. Why don't women have the priesthood in the church? Here's my dog, Missy. She's a woman. She doesn't have the priesthood. We don't give the priesthood to dogs. That's probably not what you're asking. No. It's Let's not. talk about the priesthood a little bit. We do like to have a little bit of fun, but uh, some serious stuff going on. So the priesthood is, what's the kind of the Sunday school answer when well, people ask you at church? Yeah. Hey, Jeff, what is the priesthood? What do you say? The priesthood, the, the regular typical answer would be it's the authority to act in the name of God. Or the priesthood, you could say, is God's power, do what he does. And when we are given the priesthood, it is we are given a portion of his power, his power in order to be used to his purposes. So, for example, uh, when somebody wants to become a member of the church, they are ordained, or, or, or you know, part of the process is they're ordained a member of the church by someone who has authority. Just to make sure that there's continuity. You know, the, what we used to talk about uh, when we were talking to people on our missions was, well, what, how would you feel if you're speeding down the road and then somebody pulled you over and said, I'm going to give you a ticket? And it wasn't a cop. It was just some regular old person. You can't give me and, a ticket. You don't have any authority. But they know that you've speeded. Yeah, They've clocked yeah. you. Yeah. They followed you. They know the laws. They know yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And they're even right. Mm -hmm. But it's just some, you know, there's, there's no authority. Joe Blow yeah. who's pulling you over. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of the analogy that we would use is, uh, as regards to what the authority means and how it is used in, for example, ordaining people to be a member of the church or ordaining somebody to have an office in the priesthood right. of the church. We believe that a man doesn't just wake up one day and say, I want to be a priest. I want to have the priesthood. I'm going to go start teaching the gospel. I have the priesthood. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't just come out of, yep. out of nothing. We believe, as it says in, I believe, the book of Amos, mm -hmm. where it says, uh, or no, that's talking about prophets. Well, there's uh, the article there's the one of that faith. talks about the, the, but the priesthood, the one that says... Um, uh, the, the, well, I don't know what it well, is. Well, the, the article of faith says, we believe that a man must be called of God by, by revelation, by revelation, by the property, uh, proper authority, by the laying on of hands. Yeah. Uh, so this idea of authority is really important to the, the LDS church. Absolutely. So, so, we, so you might ask, well, where does your authority come from? And for us, the authority comes directly from Jesus Christ. In fact, pretty much any priesthood holder has what they call a line of authority. And I don't, I don't have mine with me. I don't uh, yeah, mine's at home too. Yeah. But, it's, but it's, it's like a little... Do you have yours? I have mine. All right, yeah. we're going to take a look. Our, our cameraman, producer, extraordinaire, Nate, might have his priesthood line of authority. And, and the reason why this is kind of fun is because when you read through these... May I see that? So... If you can read it, that. Don't open that. Oh, don't open it. Don't oh, it's, it's two-sided. Okay. okay, thank you. So, oh, good. Okay, I see it here. Wow, look at this. So, Nate, our camera guy, has the priesthood. He has that. And here is the line of authority as to where I said, well, where did you get it from? Well, let's tell you where he okay, got it. Okay, so this is your ordination to be an elder. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so it says here that he, you were, were you ordained by Eugene E. Hansen? Which is my grandfather. Okay. So his grandfather, who held, at the time, he held the, what's called the Melchizedek priesthood, which was named after a king 
and a very righteous, very fair man named Melchizedek uh, back in the day. Anyway, so he was he was says he was ordained by Eugene E. Hansen, who was a high priest, who was ordained by Monty C. Nelson, who was ordained by Orrin R. Woodbury, and these are going back 10 years, 20, 30, <clears throat> who was ordained by Clifford E. Young, and this was in 1928, who was ordained by Heber J. Grant, who was an apostle in 1882. He was ordained by George Q. Cannon in 1860, who was also an apostle, who was ordained by Brigham Young, who was an apostle and the prophet of the church. Many of you have heard the name Brigham Young. This was in 1835 who was ordained by Joseph Smith and his counselors. Joseph Smith was ordained under the hands of Peter, James, and John, from apostles the mm -hmm. from the Bible. And this was done in an angelic manifestation, which you should read about. It's actually quite cool. And of course, Peter, James, and John received the authority directly under the hands of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So whether or not you think this is, you know, a load of hooey or not, I almost use the word defy you. <laughs> to find any normal Joe, like Nate Woodbury, who walks around with something like this in his pocket that states clearly that his line of authority, the priesthood that he holds, that he uses to bless his children, his wife, uh, to ordain others, to baptize, to perform ordinances with the, with the sacrament, or any other thing that he may be called on to do, that it comes directly from and through this line of authority from the Savior Jesus Christ himself. This is where we claim the authority for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We both have also our own lines of authority that at some point meet up with Nate's, basically probably back at Joseph Smith or Brigham mm -hmm, Young or mm -hmm. one of those, and right on up to Jesus Christ. There is a, pre a, a preparatory priesthood called the Aaronic Priesthood in which the young men of the Church, ages 12 through 16, if living worthily, may receive that priesthood. It prepares them in the same way that the sons of Aaron had a lesser priesthood in dealing with certain ordinances in the temple of early days. And they can exercise the priesthood. You can learn more about that in another video. And then men, after they've reached the age of 18 or beyond, if they're, again, mature and worthy and responsible, may receive this priesthood, which is the Melchizedek priesthood, which mm -hmm. is the higher priesthood, and become an elder or in our case, a high priest. Mm -hmm. High priest, the office of a high priest is primarily to administer in leadership positions mm -hmm. at the highest levels in the church, but all of us really are elders. Sure, that, that first Aaronic priesthood mostly has to deal with outward ordinances like preparing the sacrament, blessing the sacrament, passing the sacrament. The, collecting funds. Collecting funds, things of an outward Taking care nature. of the church. Yeah, Melchizedek priesthood is more administerial, uh, more spiritual matters. Uh, are, are handled by that uh, that classification of the priesthood. Yeah, certain uh, types of blessings and mm -hmm. ordinances, as mentioned with the laying on of hands, is the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, we don't have a lot of time left, but the question comes up, well, why don't women have the priesthood? It's simply not the order of things. Uh, we believe that men and women are here to do different things, to play different parts. We are separate but equal, but we have different roles to play. It's, you might ask the question, why don't men have babies? Why don't men have nurturing instincts? Why don't men lactate and give suck to the young? I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, we just don't. And uh, similarly, uh, you know, some things may change with the times, and there may be pressure, you know, societal pressures to allow this or that or gender line crossing. But one thing is universally true, and that is that the men hold the priesthood. Now, it doesn't mean that the women don't exercise the priesthood because the women are quite heavily involved in priesthood ordinances, particularly in the temple and in other parts of uh, church service. Women do avail themselves of the priesthood to do the things that they do. If they're called to a position in leadership in the Relief Society presidency, which in organiza is an organization in the church, or primary presidency, and in any calling, whether they're a teacher, the, their hands are laid upon their heads, they are set apart by the priesthood, and they use the priesthood to carry out their callings to be inspired to teach children in a class, they're using the power of the priesthood to do that. And again, as I mentioned, there are other things of a more sacred nature that the sisters of the church uh, uh, author, uh, not author, uh, officiate in, mm -hmm. where they're using the priesthood that the men hold. It's a, it's a delineation that is from time immemorial and will last through the eternity. And I I know it's a tender and sensitive subject, and I am sorry if we don't answer it the way that maybe you want to hear, 
but I don't think God's ever going to budge on that one. Yeah, and I, the way I think about it too is, is the, the scripture that says, neither, neither is the woman without the man nor the man without the woman. We can't get to where we want to be as members of the church without our wives. Uh, and, and the same vice versa. The, the two really go together. It's not like the man is walking in front of the woman. They're walking side by side. Yeah, and they're complementary. Yes. And they fit together. Yes. Hips and shoulders, interlocking. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you sit on an airplane, <laughs> it's like you never want to sit next to a guy because yeah. you're not interlocking puzzle pieces. And, you know, women and men have on purpose complementary purposes and roles in this life. And, you know, the, the, the more that we can keep to those, the easier the complementary roles are. Yeah. But... Anyway, so that's a quick look at, at least from our perspective, sure. the priesthood, sort of its roles and what it does. If you have any questions, want to hear more, uh, let us know. Just leave some comments. Subscribe, like, you know, do what you do. We're happy to help. Thanks so much.